Okay, welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. This is a kind of a wrap up um, with an explanation of the way I assembled the M7 Priest early production. Uh, I've already posted up the completed kit and I will provide a link so that you can check that, it, check that out if you like. Um, I didn't want to do the completed kit and then do all this in one video because it would have been really long. And some people may not give a hoot about this. Some people may not give a hoot about seeing the completed kit. So it's busted up into two so you can see what's going on. So with the instructions, I'm just going to kind of briefly go through the instructions and point out some uh, of the things that I did that I think helped uh, clarify a few things and make it a little easier uh, with assembly. Um, so let's get cracking here with step one two, three, and four. Okay, I may zoom in on some of this stuff. Don't know how well you can see it, but we'll we'll take a look. Um, all this, pretty straightforward. Um, all of this. Now, the only exception I did was with the transmission uh, house, uh, housing, the transmission cover. I did not install these two pieces here, B26 and B27. Um, and all the Sherman tanks I've done, I like to do those last just to make sure they fit uh, because this does overlap on, onto the top part uh, of the hull. So I saved those for later. So I made a notation install after hull is together. So just, you know, leave those on the sprue or, you know, cut them, get them cleaned up and set them aside for now. Um, step two, the uh, actual um, controls. Uh, the back of the transmission um, control levers that I just built straight according to the instructions. Um, let's see the back plate and all of the associated parts like the uh, exhaust, tow pencil, um, the uh, idler wheel adjusters, clevises. Um, built that just like it shows on the instructions. Um, this is the inner bulkhead um, between the fighting compartment and the engine. So this bulkhead here, I made a notation, and I didn't do this, and I would definitely do this next time, is part D36, which is this right here. They're like the ranging poles. Uh, they're often painted white and red, uh, used by artillery. Um, leave those off and paint them and you can install them anytime after weathering, before weathering, whatever. Uh, but they, they, they'll easily install after everything is together. So I would leave that off and paint it first because it's a lot easier to paint it when it's outside the vehicle than trying to paint it on, on that, uh, that bulkhead there. Um, step five. Step five is the main gun. That part all goes together uh, without any problems. Uh, this front part is metal. Um, use your favorite glue, glue it together, make sure it's straight. But all that, pretty straightforward, easy. Now the actual gun mount itself, um, I would, and I did deviate from the instructions. And there's even one more thing that I would do differently. The rails for both sides um, that the gun sits on and recoils on the track, rail, whatever you want to call it. If I were to do it over, I would glue these two pieces together first, which are uh, A13 and A43. And the reason I would glue those first is I would glue those first because that way you have just a channel and the seam running right down the middle will be much easier to fill and sand if you want to do that. If you're not going to do that, then it really doesn't matter. Then there are two pieces, A14 and where's the other one? A14 and A42. Uh, those are like angled pieces that fit in the channel to give it an angled side. So you have two angles and then a small flat portion. Uh, you can install those next. But install those before you do the filling. That way, it leaves you more room for sanding and and filling the uh, the uh, seam. 
Um, then I would assemble all the, the gun. It shows the gun going on here. That you don't even have to put on until after everything is completely finished. Uh, then just assemble all the rest of the parts. Uh, these two pieces here, C6 and C16, they're the angled parts that hold the gun mount onto the vehicle. They're like braces that attach to the sides of the inside of the vehicle. Um, I glued those onto the vehicle first. I did not assemble C2, C1, A11, and A33 onto those parts as it shows in the, as in, shows in the instructions. Okay, So you build those parts and um, you'll do those later. But those I went ahead and installed right in the vehicle. That because there's a spot right here and here that need to be filled and sanded. Um, but everything else, just install it as, show, as it shows. Um, this part of step six, same thing, just you're just putting the two halves of everything together. Now the next part, and I will zoom in on this, shows these C8 on this side and C7 on this side. Those are the support mounts for the uh, shield in the front, the gun shield. It's a curved gun shield. Watch the location. They'll only fit, they'll, they'll kind of fit in a couple of different spots. Easiest thing to do is look on the instructions here. Count these bolt heads. There's two bolt heads showing here. There's two bolt heads showing here. It goes in between them. And get them as flat as you can. And then before the glue sets up entirely, um, you can install this. And what you want to do is install or assemble these two parts here, here and here, before you install them onto that. Another thing to note is be careful. This lower plate going into C28, this curved part of the shield here, there's a very slight raised line right inside here. Make sure you put it in the right spot, okay? Which is, fits right flush against the top of that raised line in here. Make sure you get that or else your spacing will be off. Once you have those two parts together, then, it's, then do these support rods here. And then as they're curing, you can uh, install that onto here. Because this here fits on the gun and only fits in one spot. Should be easy to figure out. But if you do it before this totally sets up, you'll be able to manipulate it just a little bit and get it nice and flat and smooth along the top here. And uh, get that cemented. That way everything will be lined up and looking good. Okay, so that's step seven. Um, step eight, pretty basic. You're installing the, you're uh, assembling the fighting compartment. Um, the only thing I did differently, let me zoom back out a little bit. Okay, are the ammunition stowage racks. I did not glue those inside or on the uh, sponson sides of the lower hull, and I'll show you why in a moment. Everything else you can do. You can do the floor plate. Uh, you can do, um, you know, the driver's area. You can install the front transmission housing, okay? Uh, and the back plate and the return idler supports, okay? So you can do all that. Just don't glue in the two ammunition stowage parts. Um, and again, these two parts here, the two ribs that simulate the three pieces of the front transmission housing going together, don't install those yet. Shows them on here, but don't install them yet. The uh, front plate, this is the inside of the front plate. Pretty straightforward. Again, just watch the location. There's some like some little locator lines in there. Make sure you're sure you get them in the right spot. So you don't have any fit issues. Uh, step nine is the outside part of the front plate. Straightforward. 
It's glued together as you see it there. Um, the engine deck goes together very easily. Do it just like it shows on the instructions. The only exception is it shows the cable with the cable ends and mounts already attached. Uh, that was not going to work because this cable right here is pretty springy stuff and I knew I wouldn't be able to do it if it was already all glued together. So what I did is I glued these two parts down which is the mount and the eye. It's one solid piece. Glued those down to the uh, engine deck. Once those were good and dry, cured all the way, then I did the cable and what I did is I using super glue and I used uh, medium super glue so to give a little stickiness and we just flop around I installed one end of the cable and it fits in there really well I just put a little glue on the end of the uh, um, the eye, the cable eye, the little part that comes out I put a little there and then a little tiny bit on the deck right next to it I put the uh, cable in place and made sure it was lined up like if this is the uh, cable end here glued the cable made sure it was nice and straight like it should be and just let the rest hang off I supported it with I, I weighted it down to keep it in place I let that dry really good had a really good attachment point then I coiled it into the the other mounts where the cable loops through I wrapped that around, wrapped it around once, and came back around, and the cable's the right length, so it'll fit right up against there, and I did the same thing on that one. And I just held it in place while the uh, super glue dried. And once it was dried, it all stayed in place perfectly. That was the easiest way for me. Some people, I guess, it might be easier to assemble it all first and then glue it down, but that, that never would have work, worked for me. So this that's the way I did it. That's not the only way it can be done, but that's the way I did it, and it worked. So there's another option for you. Um, step 11 is assembling the rest of the, uh, or assembling the sides on the upper hull. Um, I read somewhere where a guy left the gun out so he could paint and he installed it after he had everything assembled including this front plate. I do not suggest doing that because it's really hard to get it in there. So to do over again I would have installed those two side supports, got that all painted, painted the gun, got all the, you know, basic painting done then install the gun and it doesn't need to be glued it fits really snug then put the front plate on so that is what I did so then uh, other than that that whole section pretty basic one step at a time make sure everything lines up and everything will line up perfectly you shouldn't have any gaps you shouldn't have any stress points everything should fit just perfectly and uh, the weld beads will f overlap just a little bit like they're supposed to put some liquid cement on there do them one section at a time just work your way around the vehicle and you shouldn't have any gaps or any fit issues it all fit perfectly with no problems uh, I've read some people having problems fitting stuff together I don't know if it's the sequence they do it or if they're just you know trying to hurry through it or what or maybe something's out of alignment but if you align it correctly it'll all fit together then this part right here which is the upper bolt section for the transmission housing I didn't put that on yet either so don't put that on um, you can assemble all this uh, I actually this part here I did not install onto the upper part of the pulpit which is uh, part D5 I glued I cemented that on first to make sure it's set in there really good then I put the ring on um, everything else pretty much done so after you get the hole the upper hole attached to the lower hole that is when I installed part B43 
to make sure it fit down in there. I had to do a little bit of sanding to get it to sit perfectly flush between the top and the bottom. If you don't, you could end up with a gap. So that's why I chose to do that, to the, uh, the second to the last thing I did. Once I had that in place and it was fit like it was supposed to be, then I installed the two parts numbered B27 and B26. And those were the last two items I did. Um, other than that, that is pretty much the rest of it. I did just perf you know, exactly according to the instructions. Um, the, the sequence that I used, with the exception of putting the gun in after I had the upper hole uh, assembled, um, seemed to work really well. But one more quick note, I almost forgot. These uh, ammunition containers, uh, you can do those last. And the reason I say do those last is because, because of the molding process, the upper part right here is just ever so slightly smaller than the lower part. And if you glue these in on top of the sponsons before you put the sides on, you could risk having them bow out just, just a little bit. So I put those in first, and then I just uh, sanded the back edge and the, um, the back edge and the side edge on the reverse side of this, like here, and then here. I sanded those down. Just kept sanding them, sanding them until it fit into place and they'll fit together perfectly with just a little bit of sanding but you won't have any problems with uh, the whole sides warping out or anything and maybe that's the problem that people had putting this thing together because you could risk having a gap right along where the side hole plate meets the sponson so that's that so that is it in a nutshell hopefully it was helpful um, for somebody building this kit in the future if you have any questions or would like some clarification uh, feel free to leave a message uh, or a comment down below and i will answer it to the best of my abilities uh, hopefully I, hopefully i didn't go too quickly and hopefully i was concise enough that you understand what i was trying to get across but uh, anyway again questions comments Leave them down below. I'll answer them as quickly as I can, hopefully help further. So uh, that's it. Look for a link below for the um, completed kit, painted, done, ready to roll. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you next time.